This is your friend Hannah, and welcome to the Kindergarten Sub School lesson. Today, we have a wonderful story to share with you, and it's called, Now I See. But before that, who likes singing songs? I know I do. Come on, boys and girls, come join us as we sing some praises for Jesus. stand in your presence asking you today cause I want to be all that you can make me a life that is filled with your glory I'm asking you today cause I want to be all that you can make me a life that is filled with your glory I'm asking you Take my life and change me, Lord, as only you can do. Humbly I stand in your presence, asking you today, cause I want to be all that you can make me, a life that is filled with your glory. I'm asking you today, cause I want to be all that you can Now I see. Boys and girls, what was the title of our lesson? Now I can see. Now I see. Yes, that's right. Now I see. The memory verse is, One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. John 9, 25. Let's repeat it again. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. John 9, 25. Let's repeat it one more time. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. John 9, 25. Now it's your turn. One thing I don't know, I was blind, but I can see. One chapter 9, verse 25. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. John 9, 25. Great job, everyone. Thank you. The message for today's story is, we serve God when we tell others what he has done for us. Before the lesson, what do we do first, kids? We pray. 
Yes, that's right. We pray. We invite you to pray with us. When it's time to pray, I bend my knees, fold my hands, close my eyes. When it's time to pray, I bend my knees, and then I talk to Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. As we're gonna start our lesson, as we're gonna start our lesson, about now I see, about now I see, and be this, and speak to us, in Jesus' name, Amen. Boys and girls, I have a question to ask you. When something wonderful happens to you, whom do you tell about it? Do you tell your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, or maybe your friends or your grandparents? A long time ago, something wonderful happened to a blind man. Whom do you think he told? One day, Jesus saw a man who had been born blind. That means he has been blind for his lifetime. The young man sat by the road, begging people to give him just a little money. But Jesus didn't give him any money. He gave him something much better. Jesus spit on the ground and made a little mud with the spit. Then he put the mud on the blind man's eyes. Go to the pool of Siloam, Jesus told the man. So the blind man went to the pool and washed. And an amazing thing happened. Do you know what happened, boys and girls? As soon as the mud was rinsed from his eyes, he could see. Imagine how happy he must have been. Imagine how surprised his family was when he came back home. They thought that he was like a different person. In fact, the neighbors weren't even sure that it was the same man. Isn't this the man who used to sit and beg people, they asked? Yes, that's him, some said. No, he only looks like him, others said. This young man couldn't wait to tell them what Jesus had done for him. Yes. I was blind, he said. I was born blind and I could never see until today. The man who they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went to the pool and washed the mud off and then I could see. Some neighbors took the man who was born blind to the Jewish rulers. They told him how Jesus had healed him. But the Jewish rulers did not want to believe that Jesus had healed him. So they asked for his parents. Is this your son? They asked. Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it that now he can see? This man's parents were afraid of the Jewish rulers and they did not want to answer. He is our son, they said, and we know he was born blind, but how he can see now or who opened his eyes, we really don't know. Ask him. He will speak for himself. But this young man was not afraid of the Jewish rulers. He was so thankful that Jesus had healed him, and he would not keep quiet. He told them about the mud and how he had washed it off in the pool of Siloam. And guess what happened, boys and girls? They chased him out of the synagogue. And when Jesus saw the man, he smiled. The man smiled back. Jesus asked the man, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Jesus asked, Who is he? The man asked. Jesus told him that he was the son of man and that he was the one who had healed him. 
Then the man responded, Lord, I believe. And he knelt before Jesus and worshipped him. And he would never stop telling people about the wonderful things that Jesus had done for him. That was the end of our lesson, boys and girls. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for the lesson. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. Thank you for healing us. Be with us, protect us, and keep us safe. Be with those who are watching. May you be with them, protect them, and keep them safe. In Jesus' name, amen. everyone i have a question for you have you noticed that world riots and protests are everywhere in big cities lately and that it's becoming more and more dangerous to live in them that's because it was never god's will for so many people to live all together in one place remember the tower of babel it was disobedience and pride that made them start building that tower and to avoid sin from rapidly spreading again, God ultimately confused their languages so that they would scatter across the world. But Babel wasn't the first city. Do you know who built the first city? The Bible says it was Cain. Yes, let's hear Cain's story. Please kids, don't say anything. I guess you already know what happened and I really don't want to talk about it. I mean, I'm mad about everything. 
the situation we live in, the consequences of sin, and on top of that, God accepted my brother's offering and not mine. You know what? I'm going far, far away. I'll be a wanderer and will never settle down anywhere. I'm just afraid that somebody will find me and kill me, even though God told me that he placed a mark on me so that no one can harm me. Whatever that is. Goodbye, kids. Genesis 4.15 says that the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. The mark that God set on Cain was not a mark of forgiveness but a temporal protection so that he could see the development of sin and its consequences, but also so that he would see the love of God manifested in God's people. Cain was proof of what could have happened if God had let people live so long. The longer people lived before the flood, the more they hardened their hearts. In the same way, during the end times, there will be a mark of disobedience placed on the forehead and right hand of those who choose to disobey God and worship Him on a different day. The mark of the beast is a demonstration of their disobedience to God. Even though it's the mark of the beast, it's placed by God because of their rejection to His commandments. They will see the honor God gives to His children as he protects them during the end plagues. Cain said he would always be a wanderer and would hide from his brethren and family because he was shameful of having killed Abel. Yet, after a while, he built a city and named it after his son Enoch. He chose to have temporal glory and the riches of this world rather than serving God. You know what? These same characteristics that Cain had are found in big cities. For example, New York skyscrapers were built as high as possible to boast the pride of the builders. Throughout the ages, and especially during the Middle Ages, a church did the same thing as Cain did when he attacked his brother. They imposed their religion and then went against everyone who didn't believe what they taught. The leaders of that church at that time persecuted and killed those who exposed their lies and were faithful to God. Revelation 18 verse 4 and 5 says that we need to come out of that spiritual Babylon. This means that we have to leave human traditions and rather follow what God says in the Bible. In a literal sense, it's also a call to come out of big cities because they are a hub for all kinds of sins. Yes, cities have more violence, they have more temptations, bad influences are higher, and it's just hard to develop a Christian character while living in them. According to certain statistics, Metropolitan areas have 79% more violent crimes than other cities and 300% more violence than rural areas. God's will for His people is that they build their houses outside the cities and grow their own gardens. That's what God's people in the past did, like Enoch, Abraham, and Elijah. They only went to the cities to spread the gospel and share God's love. You know what, children? The time has come for us to move out to the countryside. But in order for us to do that, we need to prepare ourselves really well. We need to pray about it, learn how to grow our own food, and know what we are going to live from. But in the end, it's just very important that we leave the things of this world behind. We should learn to enjoy God's nature, find joy in the simple things, and let go of all the distractions and excitements this world offers. Once you take that decision by faith, you'll see how the countryside will help you focus more on spiritual things. Let's look at a story of a rich father 
who took his son to the countryside to show him how sad it was to be poor. After a few days and nights, the son told his father what he had learned. Let's listen to him. I'm amazed to see how much happier and healthier people are in the country. The air and the water are so much cleaner. People here have so many animals. Their yard is so big and they can safely play anywhere. People have the stars as light and they grow their own food. I mean, how cool is that? The neighbors are their friends and they are so happy because they serve others. Thank you, Dad, for showing me just how poor we really are in the city. The boy's father was speechless. He realized how limited, selfish, and poor in friendships they really were. He realized that life in the countryside was much better. Have you ever been to the countryside? Tell your classmates what you like the most and what you've learned in the countryside. And if you haven't, I invite you to go camping sometime with your parents or with your church school classmates to enjoy God's nature. See you next week. Goodbye. That's the end of our lesson, boys and girls, and our Sabbath school lesson for today. Remember, we learned that we serve God when we tell others what He has done for us. Thank you for watching, everyone. I really appreciate you for subscribing to my YouTube channel. And feel free to share this with your family, your friends, or anybody. God bless you, and have a blessed week and happy Sabbath. See you next time, everyone. Bye. Children, children.